Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. And it's time for part two of the Killer Bee CNC from Radrick. As you can see, I've already been quite busy assembling. I've probably spent around four or five hours uh, so far assembling all of uh, these linear motion components. At this point, I also want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They make super high quality PCBs at a very affordable price and have their fourth PCB design contest going on. You can design your own PCB, submit it there and win one of many amazing prizes. So no matter your experience level in PCB design, if you're interested at all, make sure to go check out PCBWay.com to find out more. Now to give you a quick overview, uh, the way that basically all linear motion on this machine works is that they're using uh, this uh, C-channel aluminum extrusion uh, with uh, two MGN15 uh, linear rails on top uh, that is then connected to these plates. The plates themselves are 8mm steel plates, uh, so they're not aluminum, uh, would, they would be a bit too thin for aluminum, but they're steel plates, which is quite nice, that's gonna uh, make the whole machine even more rigid. Uh, and they, they just uh, bolt together. They have this kind of uh, black offset coating on them, uh, which the coating looks really nice, but there are some uh, scratches in there. Uh, they look like they might have been before the coating even though, so maybe uh, at the factory th these pieces were not handled too nicely or maybe stacked a bit uh, roughly. But it's uh, nothing uh, too obvious and uh, doesn't really bother, it's just uh, something to note. And the linear rails, while they do have the colors of Pywin uh, rails, I'm pretty sure they're not. I didn't see any branding and uh, they don't look all that high quality. Don't get me wrong, they're not bad or anything. They weren't too badly warped or anything, but uh, there, there is quite a bit of uh, scratching in the top surface. which doesn't really matter since that is not the contact surface, uh, but it, it just doesn't like speak quality if you look at it. But they all... Uh, work quite smoothly, uh, which is, uh, I guess, the main important thing with linear rails. For assembly, uh, they tell you to first uh, put in all the dropping T-nuts. Uh, not quite sure whether using dropping T-nuts. You could just e easily use regular T-nuts and slide the rail in from the side. Uh, they would be a bit stronger and uh, I think also cheaper, but dropping T-nuts work perfectly fine as well. And then they tell you to use these like, little 3D printed uh, guides to align uh, two sides and then tighten uh, one of the rails down. Now, let me tell you, uh, if you're building this machine as a wood router uh, that is uh, cutting out signs, go ahead, follow their instructions, you're, you'll be perfectly fine. But if you're trying to uh, get the most out of uh, your machine, this is not enough. Uh, these uh, plastic pieces have uh, quite a bit of uh, slop in them. There's probably almost half a millimeter of uh, slop that you can still push the, uh, the rail back and forth. Uh, so it will get it uh, centered enough uh, to where it's not a problem, but uh, it's definitely not an alignment tool per se. What you really want to do is use a dial indicator to get these rails perfect. Because while they are precision rails and they're nicely ground, they actually have a bit of bend in them. Even high, super high quality uh, linear rails might have a slight bend in them, uh, both in uh, kind of uh, this way, but also uh, uh, back and forth. That is perfectly acceptable. As uh, for that, th there's these many holes and you're supposed to uh, clamp them down to a very rigid and straight reference surface. Now it's debatable if aluminum extrusion can be called uh, rigid and straight, but uh, for the purposes of this uh, build, I'm just gonna more or less assume that uh, they are straight this way. So what I did uh, was just gonna use this alignment jig to uh, get one end uh, bolted down and then put this style indicator on the carriage. Uh, I only turned the magnet on about halfway, as if I turned it all the way on, then the steel bearing balls inside uh, are also attracted to the magnet too much and it doesn't roll smoothly anymore. But at around half magnet power it doesn't fall off, uh, but it still lets me roll very smoothly. And then I uh, just kind of uh, went back and forth, uh, maybe every like uh, 20 centimeters or so, uh, adjusting it uh, until I got the whole rail parallel uh, to the extrusion itself uh, to about uh, 30 micron, which is 0.03 millimeters. And in case you are curious of how uh, bent these uh, rails were, uh, most of them were quite flat uh, in this way. One of them had a bit of a bow, uh, but that is something that will automatically get corrected by screwing it down. 
but uh, bent this way uh, I saw as much as about uh, 0.1 millimeter, which is quite a lot actually, uh, if you're not compensating for that. That would basically mean if you uh, screw your reference rail uh, down with a 0.1 millimeter bow, then your other rail will also be screwed down like that, and uh, in the end your machine kind of has a 0.1 millimeter hump. Now, if you're cutting a wood sign, that's not a problem, but if you want to uh, cut something that's quite precise, uh, 0.1 millimeter is actually quite a lot. So uh, fixing uh, the rail uh, this way uh, gives you a very straight rail, and then using the plates themselves you can uh, assemble the whole carriage and uh, tighten down the second rail only after uh, you have all the blocks on. This way you can make sure that it's smooth all the way and uh, it actually aligns itself. You can just kind of push it to one side, tighten that and that's basically also what they tell you in the manual. Now what they just kind of put as a side remark in the manual is that uh, while these extrusions I think are fairly straight this way they do have slight twists and uh, the C-channel uh, also is a bit opened this way. This is to be expected more or less uh, due to the way that these uh, things are manufactured. But what that means is that uh, the first axis I did, the x-axis, I screwed everything down and uh, the bearings are basically completely locked. Uh, you could not really move it anymore at all. Uh, but if you would kind of loosen the, the bolts, uh, it moves perfectly freely. I then busted out uh, this level that I used in the previous episode because this is uh, my best straight edge, you don't have a proper straight edge. Uh, put it on top and used some feeler gauges and found out that uh, the outsides of the bearing blocks compared to the insides were out by about 0.08 millimeters, uh, so 80 micron, which is quite a significant amount if you're just trying to pull the bearing, uh, which is precision instrument, uh, that far out of alignment, uh, which is why it locked up. Now they do include shim stock actually, which is uh, very nice and there's a quick uh, remark as well that uh, if your bearings are binding up you can use the shim stock uh, to fix it. But that is the same manual that uh, gives you sloppy 3D printed parts to uh, align it and make it good enough. However, while this alignment uh, you can say yeah it's not really necessary to be any more precise. Uh, if your bearing blocks are locking up, then the machine is not usable. So I really would have uh, wished for a bit more uh, explanation in the manual of how exactly you're supposed to use this shim stock that they included. Uh, for me, it's not a problem, uh, but somebody that's new to this uh, gets this shim stock and like, where did I put this now? Most of the rails uh, were pretty easy to shim up. Uh, Using between uh, one or two uh, layers of this uh, shim stock, it's uh, 40 micron, so 0.04 millimeters, uh, and that worked quite well. But on these uh, longer extrusions, uh, it was not just that the C channel had opened, which is the problem on the shorter ones, but there is also a bit of a twist and it's not quite even. So uh, on one end uh, it actually was pretty much uh, dead on and there was no shim required, but on the other end it is very far off, out of alignment. The only way to really fix that is to shim the rail itself instead of the bearing blocks. And that is a bit uh, trickier, uh, but I just kind of put uh, some shims under uh, one side of the rail uh, where the screws are and this way I can, uh, was able to uh, shim uh, the rail into place uh, good enough uh, so that it uh, sort of uh, works now. But uh, for this I really would have needed some smaller shims as well to kind of taper it a bit more. And Generally uh, the manual says there should be uh, 20 micron shims included as well but I didn't find main. Maybe, maybe I uh, was just blind but I could only find the 40 micron. But after uh, you've kind of gotten the hang of this uh, shimming business, I was able to get all of the rails uh, within acceptable tolerance. Uh, the X1 moves actually super smoothly. As you can see, uh, while the Y ones, they move smoothly enough, but they definitely uh, do have uh, some uh, stick to them, uh, just due to the way how it's not quite perfect.
Alrighty, here we have it. The base of the frame is assembled. All the axes uh, are now uh, assembled in the way that they're going to be uh, the linear. Uh, rails are assembled and uh, calibrated. I made sure that everything is nice and square and aligned. Uh, so that is quite cool. So far, I'm uh, quite happy with how everything is uh, going together. The instructions are very clear and always tell you what to do. Uh, so it hasn't been that big of a deal so far. Just uh, a lot of tedious work and you gotta stay sharp to make sure that uh, you uh, assemble everything nice and precise. But apart from that, uh, it's not that difficult. I do have to say though that my uh, thumb was uh, quite a bit sore after uh, last weekend when I uh, put in all the screws for uh, everything. Uh, that was probably a few hundred screws and definitely felt that afterwards. Uh, but uh, maybe I should have uh, used a slightly uh, nicer Allen key. In the next episode uh, we will uh, install all the uh, kinematic components, uh, the lead screws on either side and for this axis and all the other extra stuff like the spindle is going to go on and the drag chains and all of that good stuff. We will also be doing some milling uh, as I will be uh, changing up slightly how the motor mounts uh, on one of the sides. If that sounds interesting to you then make sure you subscribe and uh, don't miss the next video. If it's already out, I'll of course I have it linked up in the cards and down below. If you have any questions, feedback, anything like that, leave it down in the comments. I'll gladly read it and I get back to basically all the comments uh, that are posted on my channel. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching and until next time.